Good evening everyone. Today we're here to talk about the merits of plurality voting and an alternative of approval voting. Here, we have with us Sarah Palin who will be defending plurality voting. Thanks Larry. It's a pleasure to be here defending democracy. Plurality is what America was founded on. Each voter gets one vote and the candidate with the most votes wins. We Americans like it simple. Many of you at home are familiar with plurality voting. But let's take a look at approval voting for a moment. In approval voting, you vote for as many candidates as you approve of. The candidate with the most votes wins. By voting for no candidate, the approval rate for all candidates goes down. This is sort of like a none of the above option. Voters can also vote for their genuine favorite as well as their preference among those likely to win. What do you think about this Sarah? I don't like it. In America we have one person and one vote. Allowing more than one vote would be un-American. One man. One vote. Sarah. I feel I have to correct you here. That idea of one person, one vote came from the war in US Supreme Court and Baker v. Carr. It dealt with redistricting. And it ordered that no vote have more weight than any other. Approval voting still weighs all votes the same. And, no voter gets an advantage. Interestingly, by using the Electoral College, we violate this standard. But let's stay on topic. Now Sarah, some of our viewers have become disillusioned with plurality voting. They claim it allows for vote splitting, and that they can't really vote the way they want to. How do you respond? In America we keep it simple for our voters. Two choices. That's all they need. As long as we only have two, there's no vote splitting. Besides, voters have a hard enough time deciding as it is. Just look at how similar my running mate McCain was to the now President Obama, who is doing a great job increasing troop levels by the way. Both support the Afghan and Iraq war, and fight for increased war funding, which we always need. Let me think what else. Okay. Both have supported the Patriot Act, the bailouts, the Defensive Marriage Act, NAFTA, the WTO, and the death penalty. Both have been against single-payer health care, a carbon tax, heaviest corpus for terrorists and taxes on derivatives trading. Let me stop you a moment Sarah. Isn't that reason to open up the door to other candidates? And it seems like approval voting would do this. I mean, shouldn't fiscal conservatives want to slow down all this war spending and these bailouts? Shouldn't progressives be able to demand a say on our trade policies, or granting abuse corpus to those accused of terrorism? Well, perhaps you're right. But no one really supports those views. What you're talking about is a bunch of radicals getting in with this approval voting. You're not talking about real Americans. That's why we have rules in our Commission of Presidential Debates. They require 15% approval over five national polls before you can get in. America doesn't need radicals, Larry. I'm having a hard time agreeing with you on approval voting allowing in radicals. If anything, isn't it the opposite? Plurality squeezes out the middle. And then it focuses on wedge issues. Even more, if a majority approve of a candidate with approval voting, that seems to be the opposite of what it means to be a radical. It also seems like candidates would be more likely to get 15% in those polls if voters could express their opinions honestly. Sarah. I guess. But people are used to the way they're voting now. They don't want anything different. I certainly haven't heard them demand it. I think of all the Alaskans, Plum and Joes, and Hockey Moms out there. And I don't think they're ready for this. This is too much. I can see a lot of spoiled ballots coming out of this too. And that would mean a lot of taxpayer money. Americans don't want that. Sarah. Just how are voters even able to spoil an approval ballot? If you vote for no one, you've voted. If you vote for multiple people, you've voted. If you've voted for one person, then you've still voted. I'm having a hard time imagining even how to spoil a ballot, let alone it being prevalent. It seems to me that it would be more common to spoil a plurality ballot. 
and let's say we keep using our voting machines. We'll put aside their integrity for now. But let's say we keep using these machines. They can still count these ballots just as easily. There's no added cost there. A. Maybe all that's true. That people still don't want to see some new voting system. This is what they're used to. Do you think the reason people haven't clamored for a new voting system is because they don't realize there are other options? People have the internet. They can look it up, can't they? Of course they can, the ones with internet anyway. But isn't it difficult to look up something you don't realize exists? I mean, how often have you heard of an alternative voting system mentioned on our news program? Or any other news program for that matter? I'll admit. I can't actually think of a time it's been discussed. I suppose I can see your point there. I think that sound means we're out of time. But we'll be back. Next time, Sarah and I will be discussing range voting. See you all next time. You can also go to www.rangevoting.org for more information on voting.